Hey, what's up everyone? Paul from uh, Grand House Fun House and today is another entry in my Only on VHS series and my first review of a Ken exploitation movie which one of the main focused I listed for my channel when I started two years ago was to speak on the Canadian side of cult and underground cinema uh, which I haven't done that much specifically the Canadian tax shelter films era of the late 70s early 80s that produced some of your favorite Canadian horror movies like uh, Scanners, Happy Birthday to Me, uh, Of Unknown Origin, Prom Night, just to name a few. It was all thanks to that sweet deal the Canadian government gave movie producers of every genre, but it was mostly horror movie producers that took advantage of that tax deduction incentive to come to Canada and shoot their movies here. So I'm gonna try to catch up and do more reviews of those kind of movies and for you to know that it is in fact a Canadian movie I'm reviewing. I'll add a red little maple leaf uh, on the thumbnail of the video so you'll know that it is in fact 100% Canadian made. So for this video, the first Hurricane Exploitation movie I'll be reviewing that was shot right here in Montreal is 1985's Eternal Evil. It's uh, about a documentary filmmaker who's going through a creative slump and has to take on directing gigs of crappy TV commercials just to make ends meet. And uh, to break off the routine of his boring home and work life, he decides to dabble in the world of astral projections, because that's what you do. Uh, that is taught by a mysterious guru-like woman named Janice. Uh, he soon finds out that he does it against his will when he sleeps, and while he does it, he commits savage acts against those in his life. With a cop on his tail investigating the string of murders, the noose is tightening around him and uh, he has to figure out the cause of all this before it's too late. This was released here in Canada during the 1985 holiday season from uh, Filmline International and released on VHS from Lightning Video three years later and was retitled Eternal Evil for the American home video market but right here it was uh, released under the title The Blue Man. This was directed by George Mahalka, who's best known for the slasher classic My Bloody Valentine, but also directed 1980s Pinball Summer. And for us here in Quebec, a huge hit in La Belle Province with 1993's La Florida. It stars uh, Winston Record as Paul Sharp, best known here in Canada for his TV series Neon Rider. Uh, we got Karen Black as Janice. <laughs> I mean, what hasn't she done from another Montreal shot movie with uh, 1973 The Picks? to uh, Airport 75, Burnt Offering, The Squeeze, Killer Fish, Cut and Run, with over 200 acting credits on her IMDb. She was one of the quintessential genre cinema actresses of her time. Then we have John Novak as Kaufman, the cop who's had quite the career in TV movie land since Eternal Evil came out. And as a bonus, we have Lois Maxwell, who plays uh, one of the subjects in Paul's documentary. She was the OG Miss Money Penny in all the first 14 James Bond films from 1962 to 1985. All right, so let me get into it without uh, spoiling too much. So right away, we start with some uh, astral projecting from our protagonist, Paul, as we get a traveling camera up on high all over his house, then uh, flying out over downtown Montreal up to his father-in-law's farm, where this uh, invisible present confronts him in jerky slow-mo because this stylistic choice makes it more dramatic. And then he's woken up by his kid who then puts him into bed and the kid sees which we are led to believe that it is the uh, manifestation of Paul's astral projecting. You know, the blue man definitely makes a, a better title than eternal evil, which really means jack shit when it comes to the plot of this movie. Then we see Paul at work directing one of his lame commercials and we have the uh, privilege, dare I say honor, to see a grown ass man in a diaper that will inform us that he needs to go potty. Sorry, can I go to the bathroom? I gotta go to the bathroom. Only if you promise to change your diapers. <laughs> Thank you. Then we see him at his therapist's office talking about what happened the other night with his astral projecting. His therapist thinks it's all nonsense, which makes Paul leave angry. And from that, when you know it, the therapist gets it. <laughs> And this is as horary as it gets. Uh, we don't see much of anything, just the, uh, the crushing sound of his organs being mangled. The movie is more uh, supernatural in nature, more of a ghost mystery, but we do get one unnecessary jump scare if you're into that. Then the family goes up to the farm we saw earlier and the father-in-law's dog senses something about Paul's 
astral projecting powers, I guess, and attacks him. <laughs> Now we're 25 minutes into the movie until finally Karen Black shows up. Janice trying to make sense of what happened to Paul. Please don't give up, Paul. You will be able to control your destination. Then Paul gets a visit from the father-in-law at his office and we find out from a walk and talk he's having with Janice two scenes later that he knows what's going on with him. We get some more exposition. We visited your father-in-law, but you... You didn't remember that. That was different. How? How did Dr. Meister die, Paul? He died of a heart attack. It was in the newspapers. What are you getting at? You think I could have I killed him while I... I think you should stop. But then, of course, the father-in-law's innards gets crushed up, and he did. <laughs> So now we get the cop on the case, we see him interview the father-in-law's best friend to know what happened and then he confronts Paul for the first time at his office to get his uh, reaction on what's happening. By the way, do you know these people? No. Shame. Then we're introduced to the uh, documentary Paul worked on titled The Wandering Soul. We see footage from it from the cop watching it to find out more about it. And uh, when you know it, it's about astral projecting. And we see the main subjects of the documentary, uh, an old married couple who talked about uh, astral projecting and that when they get too old, they found other bodies to jump into. When William takes another body, what will you do? Remarkably enough, we've never been apart for long, regardless of whom we have become. And that's only 40 minutes into the movie and, uh, you know, you're already getting a good inkling of what's gonna go down. We then uh, switch to Paul at night in his office and his kid's being a little shit, acting out. He slaps him around because that's what she did in the 80s. And a bit later that night, we see the kid wandering around the house, hearing the voice of the blue man, uh, trying to make him go into the basement. Then the cop gets his knowledge on about astral projecting from a university professor. We see him going around the city trying to find Janice. Paul is back on set directing another shitty commercial and he's had enough, gets mad as hell and quits it all. Do you want to direct this piece of shit? No, no, I'm just saying there may be no, a problem. No, listen, hey, I think you should try it. See how you like it. Hey, oh. wait a minute, I'm paying the bill. Paul, please, just one more. All right, you <laughs> tell me what to do, you fat faggot. I've been carrying you and this company for years and I had enough. You direct it. Uh, I'm sorry. The cop finally finds the loft where Janice is staying at. He confronts her about Paul and astral projecting. And we get to meet a boom mic from the production. My goodness, but you're anxious to meet me. Jesus. How flattering. I'm sorry, but the party's over. As you can see, you'll have to go. Listen, Bambo, you've had your hands busted before, so don't push me. Then we see the kid waking up from one assumes a good night's sleep and he hears the voice again wanting him to go to the basement and tells him to drink bleach because it's healthy for him. Mom comes down to the basement, sees her son drunk on bleach, trying to save him but the blue man gets in the way and wife be dead. <laughs> We see the kid at the hospital, barely survived drinking the bleach. He tells his dad that the blue man made him drink it. From that conversation with his son, he puts two and two together and goes to Janice's loft to confront her. Look, people, you can't have Karen Black in your movie and not use her for uh, nefarious reasons. That's why you want her in your low-budget horror movie. So Paul gets to the loft when the, the cop stops him before going in. Seems he figured it out at the same time as him. We get the scene where Karen Black goes batshit crazy, earning her paycheck, and the movie ends with someone getting shot in the head 
and we see the scene they used as inspiration for the movie poster. As for the epilogue, we get a random meet between the cop's partner and Paul while he's out with his kid getting ice cream so we can get that final exposition we crave. And then we get a final twist involving an unsent postcard, which will never be resolved since the chances of us getting a sequel to Eternal Evil are as low as getting a vaccine for the Rona in 2020. A few more things. Uh, all these amazing floating, swerving camera moves were done by Christian Duguay. Uh, who was the camera operator on the movie. He was good buddies with Michalka. Uh, they knew each other from uh, film school and that's why he was brought in. Uh, Duguay went on to direct Scanners 2 and 3 and 1995 Screamers, all movies shot here in Montreal. I actually saw the movie for the first time back in 2017, July 16th to be exact, at the Fantasia Film Festival here in Montreal where a uh, 35 millimeter print was found in the vaults of the Cinémathèque Québécoise where the, uh, the screening was held with George there with us doing a uh, Q&A after the movie. Um, it's been three years now since that screening and nothing has been done for it to get a, uh, a proper DVD Blu-ray release. And it was a good print, so my feeling is it will most likely stay in uh, VHS purgatory. So would I recommend Eternal Evil, aka The Blue Man, um, this had a cool concept of the astral projecting combined with murdering people. Uh, I thought that was uh, interesting, but it just never took off. And uh, <laughs> I felt I, I felt the length of its 85 minutes. The pacing was slow and it was too talky, not showy enough, but they had limited resources. This was a low budget movie shot fairly quickly uh, and they had to make do with what they had. You know, for a supposed horror movie, it's completely bloodless. So horror hounds here won't get their fix. Uh, this movie needed more goofy Karen Black and less mustachioed gumshoe subplot. Uh, I'm giving Eternal Evil 5 blue men out of 10. So that was my review for Eternal Evil. If you like this, please like, share and subscribe. Check me out on Instagram at Grindhouse Funhouse where I post on the daily. I'm on Reddit now at Grindhouse Funhouse where I'll share news of the day, special events coming up, new Blu-ray announcements, all that good stuff. So go check that out in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts on Eternal Evil. Uh, what did you think of it? Does it make you want to get into astral projections? Could happen. Who knows? If you can find a VHS copy of it, a fellow YouTuber did upload a good rip of it so you can check it out on here. Many more movie reviews in the works, so come back soon. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll say to you, ciao bye for now.